Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This video is based on the 2020 My Team trailer and we'll be breaking that down, seeing everything that's new in, in the trailer and just overall seeing how good it looks. I'm in ed editing software so I can look through frame by frame but some of these look, this looks really good. It looks very well done and yeah. So th this shop I want to focus on because I was worried with the My Team like having very out there colours and all that for your team, it could look out of place like with the car but this looks like it would fit on the F1 grid. We are fortunate enough to have a much more colourful grid, so that would probably have something to do with it looking good. And just, you know, if we go back to a 2014 grid, it would look very out of place. But with these more colourful grids, like we've got the pinks, we've got orange, bright oranges, it looks much nicer than it normally would. Um, it on the grid and it doesn't look massively out of place which is another thing I was worried about um, so as we, we scroll through yeah be the 11th team there's the driver faces not gonna go through every single one but there does appear to be some new ones so I'm, this one was in the game before because I, I used that one but this one I don't recognize but then again I never look through them so I'm not a hundred percent sure but there does appear to be some newer ones um, on here so obviously there's a typical driver numbers you can't use the ones on the F1 grid and there's my number number two you love to see it so yeah so we'll just scroll through this because I'm not 100% I've not looked through the 2019 one so I'm not sure if there's loads of new ones but yeah as we're going through scroll through here the driver overalls so it shows that you can have the driver overall like your logo on the car on your overalls and helmet it's like it's just plonked on the middle there but yeah, you, you get your logo onto the thing, so it adds a bit more character to your career mode and just have it more, like, prominent. Be, I really hope there's an S, but surely that would work. But yeah, it's very out there on some of these designs. With the paint ones as well, that looks, that's very out there. So this overall, it that can look good. That can look good. It's not as bad, it's not as in your face as some of the other paint splat ones. But this one does look quite good. And same with the gloves. The gloves look real nice. But the, the, like I said, there are new ones. So as we go through, this one. These are like the cosmic look. This is new for the 2020 game. And this just looks brilliant. Um, yeah, it's it's very clean looking. Would prefer if the gloves that match with it are um, same colour, so grey. But I'm assuming, hopefully, hopefully, I pray, I pray that you can change the colour of the overalls. Because 2019, you would have some nice designs, but they would have horrible colours, like bright yellow and pink or whatever, and it just looks horrible. So as we will scroll through the trailer a bit more, we'll get to the car liveries, as um, there does appear to be some new ones, um, which. And some of them, and they look quite nice. And, but I really hope there's more smart ones. So we'll go through here. There's this paint spatter one I was telling you about. This one's the more in-your-face one. But there is another one that is more white and like goes with the overalls a lot better. But there's this one, which I think looks really snazzy and look nice. And it looks really, yeah, I'm really excited for this. This looks really good um, for the car livery side of things. <laughs> Like, obviously these would be the same as last year, well, last year's game you change the colors you can do that but um, as, as, so we'll go through this one looks from there um, could look nice if you have the right colors I know I'm where I'm talking really fast I'll try to slow it down but this is really exciting stuff so this one again right colors could look nice um, I like this one um, yeah so let's go through to do some let's go through the juicy stuff uh, so there's some more car liveries from the top down point of view. Oh, and this is the key. Yes, frame's important. Helmet. You can have sponsors on it. Makes the helmet look a lot more uh, in place. And nowhere near as generic as um, what it looks like in 2019. Uh, so uh, as it does look really bland. Especially when you're racing online in league races. It, your helmet does not suit the car. Unless you go for the right colours. But even then it's not got the sponsors. So you're just missing a lot of stuff to make it look good. But this this car design looks good. Not that one. <laughs> that, that that one does look a bit out of place. It's, it's mostly with the bright colours. Most of them look smart. But it's very Aston, Aston Martin colours. Now we get to the good stuff. Choose your engine supplier. So we'll look at here. Ferrari is the best power unit. 
with Honda being the worst, which I think they've done Honda a bit dirty. As Renault, I think I would put Renault behind. Just from their part recent seasons, Honda have taken leaps and strides. Especially, and if you look at Red Bull, they've been able to challenge for more wins with the Honda Power Unit than with Renault. So overall, they've done Honda a bit dirty. Mercedes is behind Ferrari, which I think I'm assuming this is going off the 2019 season where Ferrari had the most powerful engine. Whether that was with cheats, nobody knows. But um, I'm gonna say no because Ferrari. Well, I'm, a Fra I'm not a Ferrari fan, but both my favourite drivers are there. Not the point. So we'll go through this. Um, obviously, the Ferrari engine is the most expensive, with it being the best. But it's um, with Honda being the cheapest, so you would have to do a balancing act with the money in the game. You would have to balance what um, the cost is. Like, say you want to get a Ferrari engine, you may have to sacrifice on the driver side of things or the car side of things, and you may not have the best car, but you'd have the best engine and all that. So you'll do very well at Monza, but not so good at tracks like Singapore, which could have it be an interesting dynamic, especially when developing the car. Um, so we'll go through this, and it, this, this, this is just cool. Just being able to choose your own engine supplier is just very nice. This livery does not look out of place at all, and I really do like it. And it blends in. It, it's very schnazzy. You can find schnazzy in these. The sponsors. So there are there's the sponsors from 2019. They're in the game. Um, so lots of these are the same. Base. They're not real sponsors because Codemasters want you to be able to have full reign over like the car and all that like just so you can have the car be exactly as you want and so say you had like dhl they would want their logo to be yellow or red depending on which one so you'd have to have things to please the sponsors if so you having fake ones you can change the color and have it exactly how you want this so here's some more sponsors there does appear to be more than last game but then again, I never really paid attention to the sponsors once again. So this is very interesting. And, but um, the sponsors, just I, I really hope you can place them anywhere. So say you want to, say you want to play the narrative side of things, have a title sponsor. You can look into that, have some fun with that. But also like change the color of your car, and uh, just make sure like just like stick your title sponsor on the engine cover or rear wing or something. And have some more little minor sponsors and like be able to change the size of them and move them wherever you want which would be really cool so now and so this is where we're looking at the sponsors um this this is interesting very interesting indeed purely from the fact that if um so you could go for a sponsor that gives you most money like distort but they would you they would want to give you they would want to finish fifth in the championship and it's first season that may not be possible especially as you're starting just ahead of Williams, like around Williams. So you'll be battling to get out of Q1 every race and battling the Williams cars. So you you wouldn't have you'd have to please the sponsors. So TriStar may be a better, more realistic one for the team to go with. Just to make sure yeah. So there's more sponsors here. Um, yeah, so it, it adds a bit of variety. You actually have to think about which sponsors you go with, not the ones that suit the car the most. But obviously with them being white. Um, that makes me think that you can change the colour to whatever you want to suit your team's colours. Say you want a black and white car, you can have a grey sponsors, so it doesn't mess with the colour scheme of the car that you want to go with. So, the controversial driver ratings. Bottas being better than Leclerc and the same as Verstappen. Let's not get into that yet. Yeah, say yet. Oh, we're going to get... Oh, F2 driver's been done so dirty, man. But, um, yeah, so here's the... Here's the market screen. Look, was very good indeed. So the acclaim is what you do. So drivers like Hamilton, they're not just going to join any team. You, sorry, there's no point just saving up 19 million to save up to get Hamilton. Your team needs to be of a certain level to be able to, you know, hire the driver. Because Hamilton's not going to just go to a back market team because they pay the most. They, he's going to want to win championships. So your team has to be of an acclaim of 18 at least. So if like you'd have to be able to have a team that's good enough for the driver, basically have a, a higher level facilities and just be able to build a car that can challenge at the top and be worth the driver going. You can see the contract costs. Hamilton obviously being the most expensive as he's won the most titles on the grid. Vettel being second most, like second most titles. Like you know, I'm, I don't need to go into all of that, but you can see everything. It looks very good. It looks very good. 
um, driver ratings are shown. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, this is really exciting. And I was, I was hoping they would have something like this. So you're able to compare drivers, so you don't have to constantly have to change, go back and forth between the screens, and overall just be able to see how that, like the strengths and weaknesses of each driver compared to one another. So say you want to get a driver that's got good experience and good pace, um, but they're down on that, but they've got better racecraft or whatever, then you can decide whether you want to sign that driver, which is very good. It's very good. Um, and so here's the driver perks screen. This is for your team, obviously. But yeah, this is so social media team and all that makes your marketing better and power mapping is better um, engine wear, I think. So it just makes it gives you that reason to develop your drivers if you want to be a challenger at the top. This is cool. So you've got Mr. Benjamin Daly here, team at Marduk. Team at Marduk? at Marduk, whatever, how you, however you say it, working on the engine, but these facilities look really good, um, but they also look different, so they, they, like, there's the, I'm assuming this is the uh, first level, like, how you'll be starting off building the engine, just on a little trolley, um, <laughs> it's just, uh, imagine building, trying an F1 team on that, but, yeah, and you go back, this is, uh, this could be the top level, but also could be the final level, like the second level, I mean, depending on like just looking at the other facilities, like the aerodynamics and all that. So uh, this could be um, the second level, as it does. It's not. It's advanced, but not as advanced as what it could be. But this is cool. You can see the car just disassembled, working on it or whatever. But this is interesting purely for the fact that they've actually included it. You can see the car in production. It just adds that extra layer of there's your car, and you've got to prepare it for a race, race weekend. So there's the PR department. I'm assuming this is either level one or level two, um, just with the way it looks. It's very sleek, but if you go later, if you go now, there you go. It's you can have multiple people, not just the casual Claire working on it here. It's just look how sad she looks. <laughs> she's like, oh, she's lonely. But now she's got loads of friends. Actually, I, I, she's not there. Oh, someone's lost their job. <laughs> but yeah, so you've got um, this. I, w I want to know what that plays. I really hope it's like the race highlights. So you can be looking at the PR department and just watch your race highlights in the past, which would be really cool. But um, uh, okay, so as we move on, this is how this, this is the main screen. So this is, you can assign time to each of the drivers to do stuff and just assign time, but you've got a date system. So it's not just, oh, you move on to the next race weekend, like a robot. Um, you just, you have to look at it and do it right. Uh, <laughs> um, but also you can assign teams, so you can have a really busy 10 days, because this is in 10 day intervals. So you can have a really busy 10 days, assign uh, the drivers to, um, like simulator training and all that which takes two days so you could like slot in a quick simulator session before the race weekend that could mean they're a bit more tired but also means that they're a bit more sharp as well so i don't know how it's going to work but it does appear to be at the bottom it would increase experience as you're just driving the car more um now this screen this screen i want to talk about because i know the r d thing is the same but it changes the whole thing of developing the car. Because one thing that annoys me with 2019 is I have actually played nearly two seasons of career mode, so I have played it quite a bit. But um, I never got the um, like quality control and all that because like, I just never. I just rather get a better car and challenge up the grid. But this changes that because you don't have to spend your resource points. You know, well, you spend a few resource points doing it, and you can actually make it better. But it costs five thousand, so depending on how much money you have and R and D points, yeah, it's it can it can be cost costly. So this is so this is um, yeah. So you can make your facilities better. Um, like I said, it's better than using just resource points. As you want to build the car to be better, which you may not do. This is standard. Um, you have the practice and event gearbox. You'll have to complete a certain amount of races. Um, yeah, this is all pretty standard. You just got to make sure you get the it to last and R and D and rely get the reliability better up. And same with this, it's changing out all the components. Doesn't appear to be any new ones, which there wouldn't be. There's not been a change to the engine side of things. But this is um, 
exactly the same. Nothing has changed here. But as we look at the... Uh, oh, this is worth noting. I think this is a wind tunnel. Um, it's not the best one, but it's a wind tunnel. Or oh, wait, no, is this testing the suspension? Yeah, this is testing the suspension because you can see the ti you can see the tires um, moving up and down. This looks really good. Like you can see the car being put through its paces, like before on track. <laughs> Here's your typical Jean Eric Verne at home simulator rig. So does ooh, is that a direct drive wheel? It appears to be. So yeah, investing in the big monies, big monies, big monies invested. But um, yeah, so this is this is cool. And then you have a full motion simulator uh, uh, moving around and all that, um, which is really cool. It would be funny <laughs> as uh, Ben Daly brought this up. It would be funny if there was an Easter egg inside F1 2020 where you could play F1 in this game. Uh, it's just gameception, am I right? Uh, so yeah, as we look into the wind tunnel, I'm assuming this is level one. Like just a fa the fan blowing the air flow viz through the car to check it, and now there's the big boy, big boy um, wind tunnel um, checking everything, which is really good. Uh, let's just see the suspension testing again, and here's the R and D tree. It does appear that that for reliability, there's stuff still here, but there's not as much stuff here anymore. Um, but one thing that is new, you can compare your reliability to other teams. So you can see, so Williams actually has one of the best reliability reli reli reliabilities on the grid. There we go. Um, but um, yeah, you can see that now, which it, which I personally don't see a point in. Like your car, because the, as far as I'm aware, there's no random breakdowns for the player yet. So th unless you have yeah, so you, you're not. Yeah, maybe for the AI you can see who it's going to more like to have a random breakdown, but for this there isn't. Um, but I want to take note here. So this, um, you can, if you look back, this is season one, so it is accurate. But you can see where you start. You start just ahead of Williams, so you've got to you're raising Williams for the first season with. With Mercedes and Ferrari being on a level pegging with Red Bull just behind. This is based off preseason testing. So there's no, this could change it. Say Red Bull has the fastest car on the grid in Austria coming up. So this could change. But it's all um, up in the air. Nobody knows. But with the pink Mercedes not being the front of the midfield, which I think is wrong. But one thing that I'm confused about is what this means. Um... Because where in the past this has been where you see compare your, like, your performance, so this could be your driver acclaim, like how much worth and all that to the other teams. But you're not moving teams, so I don't know. I really don't know. Um, so we'll go through. Um, this is just your week, like your in and out. You can see it through your con the contract period, which is about a month or two. April, May, June. Yeah, three months. So you can see how much money you like how the money flow. So weekly you're getting in four hundred forty thousand, and throughout the entire season you're one point five million in. So if you've got a, well, where you're barely anything going out, but loads going in, this is where you can um, like decide if you want to start spending more. So you can see all your sponsorship money and where the money's going. So it's aerodynamic chassis and durability, which is all very nice and dandy, but. Um, Per driver perks is what I was getting at earlier. So, um, so this will be where you can spend money and to make your driver better. So this will be um, so power mapping is where you lower the engine wear per race and additional media coaching. It allows you to just develop your driver and your teammate just to make sure that you can get the best answers possible and just make your drivers and team more marketable. Get better sponsors. This is very nerdy. This is very nerdy indeed. You can see all the money going in and out. So as you can see, you ups and downs. That as it spikes quite a bit. So as it fell down here in that like, towards August, I'm assuming this red means like a sponsor payout or something. They got the sponsorship goal and they skyrocketed. They got loads of money in and now they're starting to spend it again. But yeah, this is just a way you can keep track of how the season's going. If you're spending too much money, say you're you start up here. And you're slowly trickling down. It, it's a way you can catch, you can see trends and fix it. 
before anything bad happens. Um, but yeah. So I'm really excited. This this game mode is really exciting. This is something that I've wanted ever since I've been playing the F1 games from 2011. So this is going to be a dream for me and just enjoy it. I'm going to have fun with it. But here we see the McLaren and the Creator team going side by side. Don't know the name of the team. But we're about to see the new Schumacher driver celebrations um, on the podium. There we go. Um, just the jump up in the air celebration, which looks really, looks look really good. I'm getting the Schumacher edition, so I might run that for my driver. But yeah, so these this looks nowhere near as outplaced as you think it would. So like, this driver suit don't like, but it doesn't stand out as much as I thought it would. Um, compared to the like Mercedes and Ferrari and all that. That, that, like I said, that does benefit having a much more colourful grid, as like we've got the oranges, so we're much used to brighter colours on the grid with the pinks and all that. So it just looks better. Oh, uh, see the... <laughs> they've obviously just won the title, um, or they're just having fun with it and doing a Alonso donut, but donut and just enjoying it. But this is where everyone wants to be, winning the title. I hope I can do that, but apparently it's going to take many, many seasons to get to the top. Purely just from how where you're starting, how much you got to manage. Because to win the title, constructors and drivers championship, you're going to have to build um, a good car. You're gonna have to good a good teammate, uh, and just to get those bonuses and just have a good season. Um, so you, might, you spend money to make money, as they say. But here we see the new like, Sing like the Singapore Grand Prix win, and that is it. So overall, loving it. Something I've wanted in the F1 games, like forever. So it was like 20, it was like a minute trailer, but it's got so much information in it. So I highly recommend you go looking through yourself. There might be something that, that I missed, and you can leave it in the comments below. And otherwise, yeah, just thank you for everyone for watching this video. Um, the I would talk about the driver rankings, but that's really controversial as it's personal taste. George Russell has been done dirty. He's just because he's in a Williams. It seems to be done based on driver results. And like say he had a bad season, you don't have a good driver. So George drivers like George Russell who are in a bad car and they can't do anything about it, they've been done they've been screwed over and there's nothing they can do about it. So hopefully maybe that gets fixed. But it'll be really hard to fix it mid season just because people would have already started. But yeah, that is everything. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and press the bell icon to know when I've uploaded a video. And join me every Tuesday and Friday for some F1 content. Thank you and have a great day. Goodbye.